Hello, my name is David Ajay. I'm the principal of Ajay Associates. We're an international architecture and design firm based in London and New York. Peace One Day really came about through a series of um, conversations with friends and meetings with founders, etc. At first it seemed like what would an architectural firm be interested in this for, but actually it became clear to me that actually what we do and what Peace One Day is trying to do is, is they're analogous. We have different timescales, but we actually are in the same, same we have the same agenda at the, at the end of the day. I think that without realizing it, the notion of creating peace in architecture is probably one of the fundamentals. When I talk about um, architecture, I usually talk about creating edification or social uplift. And in a way, I'm talking about a kind of peaceful nature and an a kind of ability to appreciate and be happy within something. And you need peace within yourself. You need peace within the environment to be able to appreciate those things. So in a way, I'm asking my buildings to create that sense of peace. So indirectly, even though I wouldn't use that in my normal language of architecture, it is actually part of the basis of what I'm trying to do. So it is really connected. I mean, what could be better than having a celebration around the world to celebrate peace? I mean, it really should be something that probably is celebrated every day as a kind of, uh, as a daily practice. But to, I think, to be able to have young people, old people, people of different creeds around the world celebrating this one universal concept that we can all agree on would be magical. Um, there are many days in the world that are celebrated, but that would be a very special day. You know, it's, it's interesting. At first I thought architecture had nothing to do with peace or, or anything like that, but I suddenly realized that actually the architecture we make sometimes divides people and sometimes also creates exclusions from different classes or different groups of people. And I realized that actually, you know, that is something that we do and we think we take it for granted and we don't question that as architects and designers. We make things assuming that people just should know about them um, and should know what they mean, but sometimes they don't. And I think it's incumbent on designers to understand that and to try and invent languages that really can communicate with the widest group of people, can be for the greatest diversity, and to include the most in the quality that is the built environment or, or made things. So um, I suddenly started to realize that actually, if you made an object which made people come together and to kind of di dialogue, that was a, an instrument of peace. If you made an environment that people felt safe to come together in, despite their differences, that's an instrument of peace. So in a way, this idea of architecture as an instrument of peace or a vehicle that can incubate peace became very interesting to me. You know, I think that one is always trying to negotiate um, not to have conflict and not to have um, situations that move you away from a peaceful kind of um, resolution because in a way, in my work, to, to, to have that kind of peaceful continence, as it were, is conducive to producing good work. And so I need, to try to, I need to always try and make that situation around me. So I guess I am permanently negotiating. I am a, a consummate negotiator, um, always trying to kind of dialogue, trying to let people understand what my condition is and what I can do, what I can't do, and trying to always find a kind of position and not just to say it's like this and not like this, but really trying to kind of make that dialogue with my team who sometimes can't do certain things and I want them to do certain things and I have to not be angry and I have to say okay let's find a way to kind of do this. You know I think negotiating and not being you know stubborn about the position is very important. Temporary architecture or even permanent architecture in places of trouble or in um, sort of um, in camps etc can actually be incredibly powerful. You know, the, the notion of displacement is also reinforced by the architecture of the place. And of course, the immediate thing is just to respond. But at the same time, we have to be sensitive to that language and to realize that sometimes people are in these camps for years. And so this idea of temporariness, which we dismiss very quickly in our minds with some kind of structure, can be actually the psychological home for somebody which affects them psychologically. So for me, the thinking has to be what even is the image of temporary for something like that condition? And are we deploying the right kind of image? Should we be thinking about something else? And what are we making that can actually create infrastructure to kind of dissolve the tensions that are amongst groups so that they can actually, you know, for me, 
through dialogue, discover each other and discover a commonality which goes past preconceived ideas, which usually is the barrier to um, achieving peace. You know, peace is a really complicated thing. Peace is the ability to, to live, with, live with each other, to live with, um, with the kind of way in which the world is changing, to be able to be calm with that and to be able to find the sort of um, incredible resonance and opportunity to have a full life um, without conflict, without um, the issues that prevent you from having a full and complete life. Probably my wife. <laughs> Whenever there's a conflict, she's the one I run to, to kind of create resolution. Happy life, happy wife, peace one day. <laughs>